If we scale down the universe to the point where entire galaxies with hundreds of billions of stars fit into one pixel, we will see the cosmic web winding from threads, which in turn consist of thousands of galaxies spanning millions of light years. This is the largest pattern found in nature, and this is what our universe looks like. However, among the threads of this web, between the giant walls of hundreds of thousands of galaxies, one can see huge cosmic empty deserts called cosmic voids or dark spaces. You don't need to understand astrophysical calculations to see that voids occupy more than 90% of the universe. Just look at large-scale images of the universe. Unfortunately, cosmic voids are not talked about as often as stars, galaxies, or black holes, although they are very important in the study of the universe and can potentially answer many complex questions about fundamental physics. Therefore, this video will discuss how voids appeared, how they help us study the universe, and what open physical problems are associated with them. To understand where voids come from, we need to turn the clock back to the very beginning of the universe. In the first fractions of a second after the Big Bang, the cosmos was compressed into a tiny region of overheated plasma. Although this universe was uniform in density, there were still small variations in space-time itself due to quantum mechanics effects. These subatomic density fluctuations of the initial set of quantum particles began to stretch as the universe expanded until they became larger than any galaxy. What began as tiny differences in matter density on the smallest scale turned into regions of higher and lower matter density in the modern universe. Thus, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang, we see how microscopic fluctuations at the beginning of time have transformed into the large-scale structure of the universe. Astronomers first began to think about voids back in the 1970s, when the first large-scale studies of the universe were conducted. By measuring the redshifts of galaxies and determining how fast they were moving away from us, astronomers began to understand that galaxies are not evenly distributed in space, because some clusters were found relatively close to us, but often researchers recorded huge gaps in space before seeing other galaxy clusters. Over the past few decades, astronomers have significantly advanced in studying the large-scale structure and created complex three-dimensional models of the universe on the largest scales. Such three-dimensional maps have helped identify and confirm a large number of voids in the entire observable universe, and today researchers have managed to catalog hundreds of them. This leopard print is one of the main modern sources of our knowledge about the universe. This is the cosmic microwave background radiation. I often mention it in my videos because it is so important. It is one of the main pillars of the Big Bang Theory, through which we obtain information about the structure of the universe, its properties, and evolution, as well as the distribution of matter and energy in it. Let me remind you that the first 380,000 years after the beginning of our universe, before the formation of the first neutral atoms, the universe was in a state of dense, hot, and opaque plasma. When it expanded and cooled, it became transparent to radiation, and photons could freely travel throughout the universe. These photons are now observed all over the sky in the form of the cosmic microwave background, the oldest light in the universe that we can see. It is sometimes called the baby picture of the universe because it captures the conditions of the early universe and by studying it, we can better understand it. When the radiation appeared, it was in the visible range, but over billions of years, it shifted to the microwave part of the spectrum, and now we observe it as microwaves. Modern measurements of the cosmic microwave background temperature show that it is approximately 2.73 Kelvin. Earlier, this temperature was much higher. According to modern theories, the cosmic microwave background should be homogeneous and isotropic. That is, if you take two sufficiently large areas of the universe, they will be indistinguishable from each other, and the universe looks the same in all directions. Homogeneity and isotropy are confirmed by observations, as we see only slight fluctuations within tenths and even hundred thousandths of a degree. However, there are also anomalies. After analyzing the data obtained from the WMAP observatories, we can conclude that there is a cold spot on the homogeneous relic radiation. The presence of an anomaly is, of course, problematic because either there is something wrong with our data, or the data is correct and shows the real picture, but then our theories about the universe are incorrect. 
First, we need to understand what is so anomalous about it. As we have already established, small temperature fluctuations across the microwave background are normal, and even colder spots exist across the sky. Its size makes it anomalous. Its diameter is approximately 10 degrees. That's 20 times the diameter of the full moon or sun in the sky. Moreover, this cold spot is surrounded by a ring on the contrary, with a temperature above the average. Such a huge size really makes the spot very strange. Usually, noticeable fluctuations occur in the microwave background on scales up to one degree, but here it is 10. One of the predictions about the properties of the cosmic microwave background tells us that deviations should follow a Gaussian distribution, or normal distribution. The distribution of deviations can be described by a bell-shaped curve. This means that at the peak of the curve, we have average temperature values, and they are the most probable. But the further the deviation in any direction from the peak of the curve, whether in plus or minus temperature, the less likely it is to encounter such a deviation. The chance of such an anomaly with such a deviation, and even of such a size, occurring randomly, assuming that the entire universe works as described by modern theories, is estimated at 1% or less, meaning it is not zero, but still low enough. Low enough not to simply attribute everything to randomness, but to try to understand if something more interesting is happening here. Initially, the cold spot was discovered by analyzing data from the WMAP Observatory, which studied the microwave background. Back then, it could still be attributed to an artifact in the observations or an error in the analysis. But later, the more advanced Planck Observatory confirmed the existence of the cold spot. To date, the most logical and popular explanation for the anomaly is a huge void. Not just a void, but a super void. One of the largest of all existing, possibly up to 1 billion light years in diameter. The Eridanus supervoid, as the potential void located approximately 2 billion light years away from us is called, if it indeed exists, is the largest empty region of space in our observable universe. Since the discovery of the cold spot, Astronomers have been trying to confirm the existence of the supervoid by looking for evidence of low galaxy density in that region of space, and some study results indeed suggest this. However, there is still a lack of solid proof. It turns out that voids are characterized not only by the relative absence of normal matter, like galaxies, or clouds of gas and dust. Voids also show lower amounts of dark matter compared to what is observed in galaxy clusters. In 2021, Using data from the study called the Dark Matter Survey, a team of astronomers managed to create a map of dark matter distribution in the region of space corresponding to the cold spot. Combined with previous observations of low galaxy density in this region, new maps also confirmed the low density of dark matter in the same region of the cold spot. Combined with previous observations of low galaxy density in this region, new maps also confirmed the low density of dark matter in the same region of the cold spot. This is a very strong argument in favor of the existence of the supervoid, which may be the largest void in our universe. However, even if this is the case, the supervoid cannot fully explain all the temperature difference anomalies in the cold spot, so the spot remains one of the most intriguing puzzles for astrophysicists. As counterintuitive as it may seem, voids are not as empty as astronomers used to think. Long-term observations of voids using the most modern telescopes have shown that they are not completely empty, but have several components. The most common components found in voids are protogalactic clouds, huge clouds of dust and gas from which galaxies later form. But that's not all. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, the mass of matter can affect space by deforming it and bending light rays. In 2014, astronomers discovered an interesting fact. Light coming from distant galaxies and stars is refracted as it passes through voids. Scientists puzzled over why this phenomenon occurs. It is clear that light rays can be slightly distorted by visible matter in voids, atmospheric movement, cosmic dust, and imperfections in telescope lenses. But such significant refraction cannot be explained by these factors. The only remaining cause is dark matter present in the voids. I discussed in detail what dark matter is in my previous video. This is another piece of evidence for the existence of dark matter. Also, because there is almost nothing else in voids that can interfere, 
It allows us to more accurately study the physics of dark matter, making what seems to be uninteresting cosmic deserts capable of answering one of the most challenging questions of modern physics. If you want to help a young astrophysical channel, then subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give it a thumbs up.